welcome back to my channel. I'm Luella and I'm so glad you're here because today I get to show you my kilt collection. As you can tell, I really, really am proud of my kilt collection. They are vintage Canadian kilts and they are all made in Canada with real wool and that means that they need a little bit of extra love and attention. And especially since they are older, I make sure to give them the best care I know how to. So I am so excited to show you my collection and how I care for them, how I, how I purchase them at secondhand shops, and how I pair them with other items in my wardrobe. So let's go take a look at my closet. This is the collection that I am the most proud of because kilts are such beautiful garments. They're warm, they're colorful, and they make you look so good. The way that they're fitted, it is just, it, it really creates an elegant form. And I really also like <laughs> how they are adjustable. Uh, a lot, some of them are made for specific sizes. I have a few here that are set sizes, um, but for the most part, most kilts are a layering system, a wrapping system, and that means that I can just move the buttons and I can extend it or I can shrink it as much as I like. So I'm so proud of this collection and I take really good care of it uh, the best that I can. So I'm going to run you through how I purchase secondhand kilts, what I look for uh, when, I am, uh, when I am looking at them on the rack. I'm also going to show you how to care for them. That's really, really important. If you want to make these last a long time, you've got to make sure you have the right uh, care routine. And then lastly, I'll show you a little bit about how I pair them uh, with different items in my wardrobe. I featured that in another video where I showed you a few ways that I style my tartans. Um, but for the most part, these are so versatile. You can style them however you want. Uh, and even, if they're, even though they're patterned, uh, you can still wear other patterns with them. But you gotta do it strategically. <laughs> okay, so the first thing is first. When you're in a secondhand shop and you spot a kilt, you're excited. <laughs> but there's a, there's a few things you gotta look out for uh, because these are vintage garments and they are quite old and uh, sometimes people, they give them away because they're not in good condition. Well, I have to say that's been few and far between and the times that I have seen that, it's, it's really broken my heart because they're such beautiful skirts and the patterns that I saw, they were lovely. Uh, but unfortunately those little, um, those little holes for moths and, you know, lack of care to the garment over the years really does a number on them. So I'll give you an example. I'll, I'll run you through uh, what exactly I look for. Let's see. Let's use this one. This is a beautiful one. This is the only one that I have that has uh, large blocks of white. It's like a cream off white. It's quite lovely. So I'll run you through what I look for. So when it's on the rack, you just see it hung up like this, and I immediately feel the texture of the fabric. And uh, this is what I do when I, when I always shop for any kind of clothing item. Uh, but I, I feel the texture, and you can tell if it has a certain kind of weight to it. Sometimes you'll see school kilts. They're not authentic kilts, they're just uniform skirts, and that with a tartan pattern, uh, usually of the, with the school colors. So that's not what you're looking for. You're not looking for a thin one layer skirt. You're looking for something that's heavy. You're looking for something that's a, noticeably a, a 
a natural fiber. You're also going to immediately go to the tag. So after you've assessed the quality of the material, you're going to go to the tag. And there's a few brands that I see here uh, that I know for sure are vintage authentic brands for Canadian kilts. It was, it's probably different uh, in different regions. However, uh, I know what to look for on the label. So I'll show you. So here we have the brand. And then we have the tag telling us that it's made out of wool. So that's what you want to look for. This is a Surrey Classics uh, of Canada. It also has the tag indicating that it is pure wool. And it also has something else interesting. A lot of the kilts will have confirmation that they were in fact made in Canada. And here you can see that as well. So these are really important. The tag is what is going to determine whether or not this is a skirt or a kilt that you're gonna purchase at the price that they're asking. So once you've determined the material, you determine the branding is authentic. You're now going to look at the quality. Look at the edges. Look at the stitches of the seams. Is it done correctly? Is there Are there any holes? Are the buttons in good condition? A lot of them come with matching buttons, but sometimes over the years they get lost or people replace them with plastic buttons. This is fine. But you got to make sure that they are all there and what condition that they're in. Then you look through and you make sure that the secondary button is in there. Whether or not it has a clasp, a clasp of some sort to assist with the button. You look around, you look at the pleats, are they in good condition? Are there any tears, any holes? How does it look? And really open it up too, because you never know what's hidden in between the pleats. So once you've assessed that, are there any stains? Are there any discolorations? Have moss got at it? <laughs> so once you determine it is in great condition, you determine whether or not it's within your budget range. I usually just pick them up no matter what, because they do have resale value. Um, however, I do like to keep them for myself, so I don't... So I don't resell my kilts, but I, I believe that they are valuable garments and I am willing to pay a reasonable price for them. So, yeah, so that's what I do when I assess the garment while it's on the rack. Okay, so next is care of your kilt. Let's choose a different one. Let's see. Hmm. How about, ah, oh, yes, this one. This is one of my favorite ones too. <laughs> They're all my favorite, but you know, I, I just, I love the really colorful ones because why not wear color? Color is wonderful. So here, I'll give you a little example of another brand. Uh, this is, this is one that I see quite a lot. This one's also made in Canada. And as you can see, it also has confirmation that it is pure wool. Right here. So I have traveled with these. I have packed them away. I have gone everywhere and I've taken them with me. I've taken them all with me. So I need to make sure that I take really good care of them. So what I do is for cleaning, you only do spot cleaning on your kilts. Take cold soapy water and you spot check just through the area that is dirty. Now I usually don't, I do my best not to get them dirty <laughs> um, just because of the maintenance factor. Um, but sometimes accidents happen, you may spill something, you may get dirt on it, it doesn't, anything can happen. They are sturdy garments, um, but you gotta, you gotta treat them with a little bit of love. So, cold water, a little bit of soap, and you just spot clean. If you need to 
uh, if you need to clean the whole kilt, you just do that process in a separate tub, a little one, and you put cold water in and a little bit of soap, make the water really soapy and you, you submerge the whole garment. When you do, gently, gently swish it around just to get that layer of dust or dirt or whatever it is that's on there off. And then you hang it to dry. You don't want to put it in direct sunlight. You don't want to throw it in the dryer. <laughs> no, no, no. Never, never, never throw your kilt in the dryer. <laughs> and I highly recommend not putting it in the washing machine either. Even if it's a front loader, I just don't recommend it. Treat these with some love and do it by hand. <laughs> they will last so much longer. Now that's only for when it gets really dirty. Since these are all clean and I never really get them that dirty, uh, I just do daily, not daily, sorry, I do uh, annual maintenance. So when I buy them off the shelf, because they are a natural fiber, I do have to sanitize them as well. I use steam and that's just enough to make sure that whatever uh, bacteria is on it is removed. Um, through the uh, through the act of steaming it. I also use steam regularly or biannually to clean it, to uh, make the pleats look nice and neat again, and that's really all that I do. When I was packing them, because I had to fold them, which I'll just show you how I do that, this is the front. You can tell it's the front because here is the front flap with the edges. I fold it inwards on the pleat. So when I have it like this, I roll it from here. So it also compresses the amount of, um, it reduces rather, <laughs> the amount of space that it takes up in a suitcase or a box, uh, whatever the case is. And there you go, and then that's all that it is. You roll it up, you put it in the box that it's traveling in, and when you arrive at your destination, you gotta make sure that you take them out, you allow the material to relax, and you start with ironing it out again. Use a steam iron, it's a lot easier. It reacts well to steam, it's okay. It's only high heat, like a dryer, uh, or being out in the sun that is going to damage the wool. Iron all the wrinkles out, go and find all the pleats, just run your finger along the pleat to find the edge and press it so that it comes right back to its original form. And that is all you have to do to maintain your kilt. Some, uh, some people recommend putting a moth deterrent a wooden ring of some, a cedar ring in the closet. Uh, it has less of a smell, um, but I don't have a moth problem. Uh, where I live, they just, I haven't really seen them, and I've been here a while now, <laughs> and uh, I definitely don't have any in my home, so <laughs> I don't have to worry about that, thankfully. But what I do is, because they do sit in my closet quite a bit, especially during the long summer and spring months, I go through and I air them out. I take them out individually and I just shake the dust off of them. And I'm quite vigorous with it because I do want to get off anything that has kind of collected in my closet over the months. So I just go and shake it out and that's it. Just enough to dust it off. <laughs> and then after that, after you've done your biannual maintenance, especially if you don't wear them that often, you gotta make sure that you hang them in your closet so that they are vertical, the pleats aren't compressed, the material isn't compressed, and it's not sagging. You don't want it to sag like this. So take your, take your hanger with the clips and place it on either end. And it's good to change it up a little bit because as you can see, it can get a little bit wrinkled over time which is fine, just iron that out, but just place them on. 
a sturdy part of the garment near the edge and you pull it outwards to straighten it. You might have to get an extra wide hanger just to accommodate a larger kilt size but you can also fold, you can also wrap it a couple of times since they are wrap style dresses or skirts rather. And yeah, so once it's all good, once you've inspected it to make sure that it's still in good condition and you've dusted it off, you put it back in the closet. And you leave it to the next time you wear it. Okay, so lastly, we've got to figure out how we're going to style these beautiful kilts. <laughs> now you can do what I'm doing right now, which is wear a simple black top with a black sweater to really let the kilt stand out. You can also pair it with a classic, classic white blouse. And you can go crazy with the textures because although they are patterned, they look lovely with any texture on top. Let me show you an example. I did show these blouses before in a previous lookbook that I did, but I'll show you what I'm referring to when I talk about different textures. Here I have three different white blouses, and I always, always, always wear these with my kilts. Because on top of this blouse, you can wear a blazer, you can wear a waistcoat, you can wear a cardigan, you can also wear a nice little vest. It is totally up to you. This is a Mandarin style collar. It's really low profile, but it looks lovely. It's simple. This would go excellently with, let's say, this one right here. A little tip from me that I like to do is I like to pick a color in the kilt. In this case, we're going to pick white. And that's going to be your accent color. That's going to be the color of the top that you choose. So here, these would go excellently together. It's simple, it's clean, it's plain, and you can't go wrong with that. This will go perfectly with a plain cardigan of any color. A pink top would go lovely with this, even a light blue. So gray is also a really versatile kilt color because you don't have to be afraid. You can pair it with anything. Black, gray, white, pink, blue. Stay within the colors though if you want to do something other than white or black. Stay within the colors that are already present in the kilt. Brown is also a good color. This one is textured. It also has a Mandarin style top, but it is ruffled. This is long sleeve. It's actually a little bit too long for me, so I, I fold these sleeves over. <laughs> but this would go perfectly with, let's say, let's see, ah, with this one. How nice does that look? <laughs> so the nice thing about this, this has an eggplant purple in it, as well as a gold color. This will go with either of those colors. It will go with a black, it will go with a brown, it will go with a white. So even though this is a statement color, this is a statement piece in, in, uh, in your outfit, you don't need to be afraid to use color. <laughs> it is possible. And it works because the kilt helps you with that. This one is great because it's collared. You can wear a variety of accessories with it and that I'll show you in another video. But this has a ruffled front. So this alone is a statement piece. However, that's the beauty of a kilt. You can have your the, the top, the blouse, be a statement while allowing the kilt to also be a statement. I know it's a bit of a, an odd equation, it's a bit of a conundrum, if you will, but it, it works. So this one would go excellently with this one. And as you can see, 
there's white in this kilt, so that easily allows this to pair nicely with it. Now here's an example of a kilt that has a lot going on in it. <laughs> and that is okay. You have red, you have blue, black, green, yellow. You have a lot of options. <laughs> in this situation, I would probably pair this with only a black or a white top. Now, it's not because I'm afraid to wear color uh, in this instance. It's only because this is quite a bold skirt. This is quite a bold pattern. And I want to draw as much attention as possible to this pattern, not to the outfit as a whole. This is, that's the only reason why I would, I would wear a simple black or white top. This is what I want to be noticed. So. I'm going to allow this to stand out. So yes, so that's how I would pair most of my kilts. So I have one more thing that I forgot to mention earlier, but there's something called a kilt pin. And these can come in so many different sizes, shapes, designs. Some of them are works of art. I have a plain one here. And as you can see, it just looks like a giant safety pin. This one's a little bit more ornate. It's got some rhinestones on there and it's gold colored. This, I, I wear this on special occasions um, because it is, it's pretty. So I'll show you how to use these. They're, they're really easy. Um, they're just to keep the front flap uh, secure, especially when it's windy um, and you're walking around it also adds a little bit of weight to the front, which is kind of nice. When you have your skirt here, your kilt, you're going to take a look for that top flap. You're also going to look for, underneath, the second flap or panel. It's just one layer, but you want to make sure you have them. You also want to make sure that it's aligned. You want to make sure it's hanging nicely on you. That way when you pin it, it doesn't, it's not pulling any awkward directions uh, when you finally put it on yourself. So I'm just going to show you. You open the pin. You decide where you want to put it in this general area. For me, I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to pinch, I'm going to pinch the two panels to my fingers and I'm going to go in the direction of the weave. I'm going to gently, gently put it through and it's already gone through. I'll just show you here. It's gone through, nice and clean. No threads were broken and you just go a little bit, maybe about half an inch and you do the same thing slowly slowly working the tip point of the pin through and you close it. And there you go. You have yourself a nice bit of decoration for your kilts and this is not going to go anywhere now. So if it's windy you don't have to worry about it opening on you. It's going to be just fine. Now, when you want to take this out, you open it gently and you slowly slide it through and you close it for safety. Now, it's I know it's really hard to tell, but there are tiny, tiny little holes and like I said, wool is very resilient, but and I was also very careful to not uh, break any fibers or threads. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch the two panels with my fingers, just like I did before, and I'm going to slowly work the fabric up and down, and I'm going to work those holes out of the fiber. 
especially with looser, um, loosely woven kilts, this is really beneficial. Um, but as you can see, there's no hole, and you're good to you're good to put in storage now. Now, when you're done wearing your kilts, I recommend, especially if you're storing them for uh, long for the long term, I recommend taking your kilt pins out of your kilts. Uh, I'll, I'll show you all of my patterns here. I'll show you all of my skirts. to let me show you my collection. I hope you enjoyed this video and I am looking forward to showing you a bit of how I accessorize my outfits in the future. So please remember to like this video and subscribe and I look forward to seeing you next time. See you all later.